Cynthia, are you okay? Tears welled up in my husband's eyes as he spoke to me. I had suddenly developed severe stomach pain right after eating the beef stew made by Olivia and was rushed to the hospital. In the hospital room, my husband showed me a video. What is this? Upon seeing the video and understanding the situation, I immediately felt an overwhelming nausea and covered my mouth with both hands. This is absolutely unforgivable. The video clearly showed Olivia moving in and out of the toilet while cooking. I am Cynthia, a 25-year-old office worker. My husband Kevin, who is three years older than me, and I are about to celebrate our third wedding anniversary. Kevin and I married following his earnest approach, but even after three years of marriage, we have not been able to find much time just for the two of us. I got promoted right after getting married and have been extremely busy ever since. Still, Kevin always says gently, I am happy just being married to you, so don't worry about it. I'm sorry, Kevin, and thank you. Kevin and I live in a family-oriented condominium. Both of us strongly desire to have children, so we chose this place with the future in mind. Here with Kevin, I'll build a warm family and welcome the children we'll have someday. But my busy schedule never eased, and we couldn't have a child for three years. Then one day, as we were eating dinner as usual, Kevin spoke to me with a serious expression. Hey, I got promoted. I think my salary will increase significantly. So if it's okay with you, Cynthia, how about you quit your job and become a housewife? Let's seriously think about having children. I was surprised by the sudden suggestion. A promotion? That's great. Yeah, I've been thinking about children too. I want to start preconception care seriously. And so, our journey into preconception care began. However, it turned out I had difficulty conceiving. And even after six months of preconception care, we still hadn't been blessed with a child. I'm sorry. It seems like it didn't happen this month either. And don't apologize, Cynthia. It's not your fault. Every time I felt down, Kevin would gently stroke my head. I'm so grateful to be married to such a kind person. Not just Kevin, but his mother Olivia has also been kind to me lately. Hearing that we were having trouble conceiving, Olivia started visiting us occasionally. She began living alone in an apartment near her home after my father-in-law passed away a few years ago. Olivia, who dotes on her only son Kevin excessively, has been good to me since the beginning of our marriage. Olivia brings over lots of side dishes, saying, You need to eat nutritious food. Rest up, Cynthia. I'm alone and free, so don't worry about me. I have to take care of Kevin's wife, and she even prepares meals for us. Moreover, Olivia says, I don't want to impose on Cynthia and never stays to eat with us. No matter how much I invite her, Olivia is such a kind person. Kevin must have grown up with that kindness. I couldn't be more grateful for this blessed environment. Then one day, I was feeling under the weather and lying on the sofa as dinner time approached. Olivia, having heard about it from Kevin, came over with a worried look, bringing dinner she had prepared. Cynthia, are you okay? This is fried chicken I just made. Kevin hasn't come home from work yet, but I thought I'd bring it over early so you can eat it while it's hot. Wow, really? Thank you. Won't you be with me, Olivia? When I invited her, Olivia shook her head. I already ate at home. I'll go back now, she said and left quickly. I'm happy she's considerate, but I wish we could have a meal together. Maybe I should invite her more firmly next time. While pondering this, I took a bite of the fried chicken Olivia had brought. Instantly, ouch, what I felt was a sharp pain in my cheek, and I let out a small cry. I hurriedly spat out the hard object from my mouth and was shocked at what it was. What is this? Glass? It was a piece of glass about three inches in size. Was this in the fried chicken? As my heartbeat quickened, desperately I racked my brain. Did Olivia put it in? No, that can't be. Olivia wouldn't do such a thing. Maybe she broke some dishware nearby and it got mixed in with the batter. Yes, that must be it. Thinking that the kind Olivia could never do something so malicious, I decided not to worry too much about it, despite feeling a little uneasy. Telling her there was glass in the dish made would surely shock her, so I decided not to mention it to either Olivia or Kevin. A week passed, and my health did not improve. 
Hearing this, Olivia began bringing over dishes almost daily. However, since then, I frequently found foreign objects in the dishes. Hair in the hamburger, lugs in the chili con carne. And it always happened when Olivia brought over dishes just for me before Kevin returned from work. It couldn't be a coincidence, could it? Alarmed, I decided to talk to Kevin. You know, I'm hesitant to say this, but sometimes there are things like glass shards or bugs in the dishes Olivia brings over. It only happens when she brings dishes just for me. At first, I thought it was a coincidence, but it's happening too often. Kevin looked utterly surprised as I spoke. Mom, she seems to like you, Cynthia, and doesn't look like someone who would harass. But now that you mention it, she's been complaining about her forgetfulness lately. Could she have started developing dementia? Saying this, Kevin seemed lost in thought. I like Olivia too and don't want to suspect her. But it's scary since it involves food. I've been feeling unwell lately, which makes me even more worried. Yes, I have been feeling unwell since then. Feeling unwell? Haven't you been late on your period this month? Could it be that you're pregnant? Kevin's words made me realize. That's true. I'll go to the hospital tomorrow. Saying this, I was visibly unsettled and Kevin gently stroked my head. I'll talk to mom about it tomorrow. I have the day off. If she really might have dementia, we need to think about what to do. Don't worry, Cynthia, okay? Thank you, Kevin. So I left the matter with Olivia to Kevin and decided to visit the hospital the next day. The delay in your period hasn't been long enough to confirm pregnancy yet, but your symptoms are similar to early pregnancy nausea. Please take care not to strain your body too much said the doctor at the hospital. I returned home, my heart fluttering with hope. I might be pregnant. If that's true, it's finally happening, though it wasn't confirmed yet. I was somewhat elated, unaware of what was to come next. When I got home, Kevin was sitting on the sofa with a troubled look. Mom might be starting to develop dementia. She doesn't remember anything about the foreign objects in the dishes. I'm thinking of taking her to the hospital soon, he said. Hearing this, I felt a mix of relief that Olivia wasn't doing it intentionally and concerned that she might have dementia. I installed a caregiving monitoring camera at Mom's house today. This way, we can respond immediately if anything happens to her, Kevin continued. That's good to hear. It eases my mind a bit. I'm mostly at home, so I'll try to keep an eye on it as much as I can, I replied. I missed the chance to tell Kevin about the possibility of being pregnant as I saw him looking downhearted about Olivia. Well, it's not confirmed yet. It's better to report it once I'm sure, I thought. Then, the next day at noon, the doorbell rang. When I looked through the monitor, there was Olivia standing at the front door, holding a large pot. What are you doing with such a big pot? I hurriedly went to greet her. Olivia looked down apologetically. Cynthia, I heard everything from Kevin about foreign objects mixed in dishes. I don't know how to apologize, she said. It's okay. It wasn't intentional, and I noticed everything before swallowing. So there's no harm done to my body. Please don't be too hard on yourself. I reassured her. As I said this, I thought I saw Olivia's eyebrows twitch slightly. I made this beef stew as an apology. You haven't had your period, right? In case you're pregnant, you need to eat nutritious food. I put lots of healthy ingredients in it, so eat up. Olivia said, handing me the pot. Wait, how did you know I haven't had my period? Did Kevin tell you? I asked. Ah, yes, that's right. Kevin sent me a message about it yesterday. Olivia replied hurriedly, almost as if she was in a rush. Thank you, I said, feeling uneasy as Olivia left. I placed the pot Olivia gave me in the kitchen and served myself some beef stew. It was just about lunchtime, so I thought it was a good time to eat. As I sat down and tasted the beef stew, I noticed an indescribably unpleasant flavor. What's this? Could it be a mistake in the seasoning? I wondered. But I couldn't just throw away the beef stew Olivia had made, so I managed to finish the serving I had dished up. However, by then, the strange taste of the stew had made me feel quite ill. As I was washing the dishes, suddenly I felt a sharp pain in my stomach and doubled over on the spot. What is this? Could the beef stew have been spoiled? The pain intensified over time and I broke out in a cold sweat. Unable to endure it any longer, 
I called an ambulance with trembling hands. Then, I lost consciousness. When I woke up, I saw the stark white ceiling of the hospital. Where am I? Oh, I remember now, my stomach hurt in a daze. I gently rubbed my stomach. It seemed I had already been treated as the pain had subsided. Then, a nurse entered the room. Oh, you're awake. I'll get the doctor right away, she said with a smile and quickly returned with the doctor. Cynthia, how are you feeling? Did you eat something bad before the stomach pain started? A gentle-looking male doctor asked me in a calm tone. Just before, I ate beef stew made by my mother-in-law, Olivia. It tasted a bit off, so maybe it was spoiled, I replied. As I pondered and spoke, the doctor nodded while listening. I see. Given your symptoms, it's likely some bacteria got into your stomach, causing the pain. If it was spoiled, that would make sense. You might continue to experience some abdominal pain for a while, but as long as you take your medicine, you can recover at home, the doctor explained. Hearing his words, I felt a little relieved. I'm relieved it's not serious enough for hospitalization. Please rest quietly here for today. Call us if you need anything, the nurse said before leaving the room. Right after that, the door of the room burst open energetically. Cynthia, are you okay? There stood Kevin, panting, his face pale with worry. Kevin, I'm okay. It seems I ate something bad. They said I can go home if I take the medicine. But I might have to stay here tonight, I explained. Despite telling him it was just food poisoning, Kevin's face remained pale. Cynthia, what did you eat right before the stomach pain started? You don't need to downplay it for my sake. Please tell me the truth, he pleaded earnestly. Surprised by Kevin's earnest expression, I responded, Kevin, you're overreacting over a simple case of food poisoning. Olivia brought over some beef stew, but it seems it was spoiled. I thought it tasted strange, but it's my fault for not stopping her. Olivia was just trying to care for me. Kevin took a deep breath to calm himself and sat down on the chair beside the bed. Cynthia, look at this, he said, taking out a tablet from his bag and showing me the screen. It was a video of Olivia's house. This is it, the monitoring camera you set up at Olivia's place. I asked, and Kevin nodded. Exactly. It's a recording from a few hours ago, when mom was making the beef stew she brought to you, Kevin explained. Sure enough, Olivia was seen in her kitchen preparing beef stew. There was nothing unusual at first glance. After finishing, Olivia untied her apron and went into the bathroom. Kevin, what is this supposed to mean? I asked, bewildered. Just as I was about to ask, what appeared next on the screen left me speechless. Olivia came back from the bathroom holding a plastic container, then went back into the bathroom again. A few minutes later, she emerged and poured the contents of the container into the stew pot. So the beef stew had Olivia's waste mixed into it. No, can it be? I felt a sudden surge of nausea and covered my mouth with both hands. My heart raced with disgust, and I couldn't stop trembling. On the screen, Olivia was mixing something while stirring the pot with a ladle. I listened closely to her words and froze in horror. Won't allow, won't allow a child. I won't let anyone take Kevin away from me, Olivia muttered with a fierce expression. I was too terrified to speak, only able to shiver. Kevin held me tightly. I'm sorry, Cynthia. I know this is shocking. When I heard you were staying in the hospital, I went home to get some things and saw mom's pot in our kitchen. I feared she might have put something strange in it again. When I checked the camera footage, this is what I found. Kevin spoke in a quivering voice. This can't be brushed off as forgetfulness. It's clearly malicious, I whispered and Kevin apologized deeply. I'm so sorry, Cynthia. I understand if you want a divorce after this. I'm so sorry for what my mom did, he said, shocked. I shook my head in disbelief. Stop it, Kevin. It's not your fault, I spoke in a panic. The door to the hospital room opened with a noise. Kevin, what are you doing? Came Olivia's voice, voicing her surprise as she entered the hospital room. Olivia, the Olivia I had adored until just a moment ago, now seemed so terrifying. I was so scared of Olivia that I couldn't utter a word. Meanwhile, Kevin, without hesitation, approached Olivia as soon as he saw her. Mom, what have you done? 
He grabbed Olivia's shoulders and shouted loudly. Startled by the sudden confrontation, Olivia's eyes widened. What? What are you talking about? What did I do? She exclaimed, shocked. Don't play dumb. What did you feed Cynthia? Kevin's words were firm. Olivia's expression twitched. Oh no, did I make something strange again? I'm sorry, Cynthia. I'm becoming forgetful lately. Olivia tried to pass it off with a smile. However, Kevin thrust the tablet screen in front of Olivia. It's all recorded here, Mom. Why? Why did you do this? Kevin confronted Olivia with a voice deep with anger. Unable to say anything in return, Olivia just looked down silently. Olivia, did you do all that on purpose? I managed to ask with a trembling voice. Olivia then glared at me with hatred. Yes, it was on purpose. I thought you might be pregnant after hearing about your continued illness. A child with Kevin. I could never allow that. Olivia's face was filled with malice, but I didn't back down. After being so kind to me all this time, why suddenly? If I did something wrong, please tell me, I said, gripping the sheets tightly. Olivia sneered at my desperate expression. Oh, Cynthia, I never liked you. I resented you for taking away my precious only son, but I had to be kind to avoid being disliked by Kevin. Olivia's words sent chills down my spine. But enough was enough. I had always believed in Olivia. I loved her, convinced she wasn't the kind of person to be malicious. But now enough is enough. I felt something inside me go cold. Olivia's revelation shook me to my core. Kevin seemed too drained to be angry anymore. I addressed Olivia with a cold voice, cutting through the air with sternness. Olivia, what you did is a crime. Deliberately contaminating food and planting a listening device in someone's house. Once I recover, I will pursue legal action. Don't think you can get away with this, I declared surprisingly calm amidst the turmoil of emotions. The anger and fear towards Olivia, the sadness of being betrayed, it all seemed irrelevant now. I feel nothing towards you anymore. Right now, all I want is to be away from someone like you as soon as possible. I will hire a lawyer, so communicate through them from now on. I continued, unmoved by Olivia's shocked expression. Wait a minute, a crime? Am I going to be arrested? It's ridiculous to sue me for this. What do you mean? Olivia's eyes widened in disbelief, trying to downplay her actions. Your actions have caused real harm to my body. There's evidence. Don't think you can talk your way out of it, I asserted firmly. As I spoke, Olivia grabbed Kevin's hand, trembling. That's it, his true nature. She's the kind of woman who bullies an old lady. Scary, isn't it? I did everything thinking of you, Kevin. You understand, don't you? Olivia appealed with a seemingly gentle smile, but Kevin's response was firm. What are you talking about? The scary one is you, Mom. And what you did wasn't for me, it was all for yourself. You hurt someone important to me for your own sake. I never want to have anything to do with you again. Let's cut ties, Kevin said, shaking off Olivia's hand decisively. Kevin, I'm sorry. It was all my fault, please. I have no one but you, Olivia cried out, banging on the door in the hallway. Soon, security came due to the commotion and took Olivia away. Afterwards, my health quickly recovered and I was able to return home safely upon discharge. We submitted the camera footage to the police, and an investigation began immediately. The listening devices in our house were found, leading to Olivia's swift arrest. Rejected by Kevin, Olivia seemed to have suffered a mental breakdown, crying and wailing during the investigation. I did nothing wrong. It's her fault for trying to take Kevin away, Olivia shouted, lashing out at the officers. Demanding compensation from Olivia, we made her pay a lump sum to cover the damages. Olivia incurred debts and now works in physical labor as a live-in worker, reportedly spending her days working hard and crying alone in her apartment. I told Kevin he didn't need to force himself to legally disassociate from Olivia, but he said, I always knew she had trouble letting go, but I never realized she was so obsessively attached. Now that I know mom's true nature, I'm afraid to remain in a parent-child relationship with her. He immediately proceeded with the disownment process. A month later, it turned out I was pregnant. Both the baby and I were healthy and developing well.
Kevin and I cried with joy and promised each other, let's build a warm family from now on. I want to create a bright future with Kevin and our baby.